require authorized keys for SSH access in PFSense. So in this video, require authorized keys for SSH access in PFSense, we will check to see if SSH is by default enabled in PFSense. If not, we will enable it. SSH is of course secure, but let us add another layer of security by requiring authorized keys for SSH access. First, we need to search and download for some program, hopefully for free, that will generate SSH authorized keys. In our demonstration, we will use the PuttyGen or PuttyGen, which is part of the Putty program. Then I will show you how you can apply the generated keys from this program to our PFSense. And in the Putty Terminal program, which we will use to log in via SSH. Okay, our PFSense has been powered up. So as you can see, I am using a PFSense with a version of 2.4.4. And currently, my LAN interface in my PFSense has an IP address of 192.168.1.1. I am using an internet browser to log in and manage our PFSense. So I've typed the IP address 192.168.1.1, and we are prompted to type in the username and password. In this case, my PFSense login is admin and the password is PFSense. So we will click sign in to enter and manage our PFSense. We are able to successfully log in in our PFSense and we are here in the PFSense dashboard. Okay. So first, we will check if our SSH access for this PFSense is default allowed or enabled. We can check on that under the System Advanced menu. Let's click on the System Advanced menu. Okay, so we are inside the System Advanced Admin Access menu. So let's scroll below and find the related portion for the SSH. In here, we could see the secure shell area in our admin access portion. And you could see that the checkbox for enable secure shell is unchecked. So by default, the SSH access is disabled. Let's proceed to enable the secure shell. And if we scroll below, there is a save button to commit or accept our changes. So let's go ahead and click the save button. And if we will see on top, we should be able to receive a message that our setting has been applied. Okay, so the changes has been applied. So we have enabled the SSH access. Before we proceed further, let's test first using our PuTTY terminal or PuTTY terminal. And we will try the SSH access. So under the hostname portion, we will type in the IP address of our PFSense which is 192.168.1.1. The default port for SSH is port 22. So the connection type is SSH. And let's click open. And for login us, we will type admin and password for our admin is pfSense. So, all right, so we have tested that the SSH access is working. We are back in our PFSense 
web GUI and we go back to the SSH configuration page. So here we have enabled the secure shell. Next is the SSH key only setting and currently it's password or public key. So for this setting, password or public key, so you only need to have one of these two, whether it's password or public key. So in our case, we don't have any public key yet, but of course we have password. So that is why we are able to log in with our admin user in SSH. Let's check on the other options. So you have the public key only and you will have the require both password and public key. So let us try using public key only setting in our SSH key only and see what is the behavior or what is the effect when we do SSH. As usual, whenever there is a change, we have to scroll below and click save to apply the changes made on our setting. Let's try to SSH in to our PFSense. We did not change any IP and port numbers, so it remains the same. Let's click open and see if we will be allowed to SSH. Let's click open. So login as admin. As you can see, we have an error. No supported authentication methods available. So meaning to say, our PFSense is now expecting authorized keys when we try to log in via SSH. We will use PuttyGen or PuttyGen, which is part of the Putty package. So we will use this program to generate our authorized keys. If you don't have this program yet, you could go to this website and you could download the latest stable version of Putty and please choose what is appropriate for your operating system. So let's click to launch the Putty Gen generator program. Okay, so you have some help menus here that you can take a look. And this is the current version of the Putty Gen release 0 0.75, which is for Windows. All we need to do is actually to click this generate button in order to generate a public and private key pair for our authorized keys. You have some options of type of key to generate. So you have RSA, DSA, and others. I leave it to you to read more about these algorithms. So of course, they have their own fair share of disadvantages and advantages. For now, let's leave the default settings as it is. And let's click to generate. Let's generate a key. So please generate some randomness by moving the mouse over the blank area. So that's why I'm moving my mouse. So now we have the authorized key and actually there are two generated keys. One is the public key and the other is the private key. The public key will be used for encryption and this is the one that we will need to paste on our pfSense. The private key will be used for decryption and we will need to store it on our computer which will use for doing SSH access to our pfSense. Let us save the private key first. To our computer so let's skip the passphrase first okay so click yes so let's remember the location so for now let's store it on our documents 
location so let's name this one as admin key because this private key will be used by the administrative or the admin user we can also save the public key just in case we have some issues with our copying and pasting so let's click the save public key and of course let's put in a distinguish name so pub key admin pub key to differentiate from the private key so let's try to copy all and paste it on our pfSense so we can do so by selecting all and right click again to click the copy next we go to our pfSense web GUI again and this time let's go to system and user manager we are now inside our system user manager page and we selected the users tab as you can see we only have one user and that is the admin user we need to go to actions and there's a little button here to edit this user let's click on that let's scroll below and find the setting for authorized keys now let's go ahead and paste the key all right so this should be it and let's click save to accept the changes for this user and the change was made we relaunch our putty program and still the same settings but this time we need to add in our private key and we can do that in this party program to go to connection after which you go to ssh okay and after that you go to auth and from here there is private key file for authentication and we can browse to the location wherein we save our private key let's go ahead and do that now let's click browse and this is our private key so admin key that is stored in our documents library so click open to accept and load in our private key now that our private key file is being readied so let's go to the session again and this time let's click open let's test to login as admin and as you can see authenticating with the public key and yes because of our private key match we are able to log in this time to our ssh successfully one more thing to add is if we have a new user let's say i have a user inquirinity for simplicity let's use the same password pfsense okay so for group membership let's add this user as a member of the admins group if you scroll down you also see an authorized keys for this user so you could use the putty gen or putty gen to generate a new public and private key pair and this time you save the private key as a different file name for example inquirinity private key and for the public key you copy and paste it here for this new inquirinity user so in other words you will have a different set of public and private key pair for your users so one set for your admin and another set for your inquirinity user so in this video require authorized keys for ssh access in pfsense we learn how to enable ssh and change the ssh settings in pfsense so whether it will accept password only or password or public key 
we also learn how to generate a public and private key pair using PuttyGen program. Finally, we know how to apply our public key to our PFSense users and as well as how to set the private key on our PuTTY terminal program.